Hello, Dawn. How are you? I am doing quite well, Hiva. How are you? Good, good. Okay, let's just jump right in to, to the interview. Okay. Um, so you're the founder and CEO of Made for Freedom. So kind of like wanting to learn more about your vision, what is your biggest inspiration? You know, why did you start this venture? You know, I was, um, I heard some stories, I saw some instances of human trafficking and sex trafficking. And it just, it weighed on me. It weighed on me for several years before I could figure out how I could get involved and how I could actually do something to fight this atrocity. Um, and it ended up being a, combina a culmination of several things kind of coming together, but it, it's really all about trying to help people that are at risk and people who have survived exploitation, um, specifically sex trafficking, human trafficking, labor trafficking. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the biggest lesson or takeaway that you've learned since starting your venture? Um, it's interesting. I, when I, before I started the business, I never, I never had dreams of starting a business. Mm -hmm. I have degrees in education and theology. I, part of who I am, I like helping people. I like stepping in to help. And I never saw examples of business that really resonated with who I am until I, I started to understand social enterprise. And mm -hmm. when I contemplated starting a business that could help survivors of trafficking, mm -hmm. I, I interviewed a lot of people. I went and talked to business owners, CEOs, and one guy I remember specifically said, oh, you don't know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. It's like running to the edge of a cliff and jumping off. You have no idea what's on the other side because you can't see everything you're going to face. Mm -hmm. And he said, and it's probably a good thing you can't see it because if you could see everything you're going to go through, you might not do it. In fact, you probably wouldn't do it. Uh -huh. And I would say running a business is hard. Um, and I would say running a social enterprise is even more difficult. Right because there are misconceptions there people don't not all people but there are so many people that don't understand how you can be a for-profit and really be missional and mm -hmm. purposeful in helping people right so i don't know if that's one answer i would say running a business is hard yes. running a social enterprise is even more difficult uh-huh no, that's, that's definitely true. Um, <laughs> and like in, in regards to being an entrepreneur in this field, what have you enjoyed? Um, you know, what's, what's the bright side of this? Oh, I'm good. You know, I, Heba, you know me, I can't just answer one thing. <laughs> I'm going to say a couple things. One, when when we're running our numbers and most entrepreneurs, most business people would run, they would look at revenue streams. Like what's the revenue coming in? What's the revenue coming in? Mm -hmm. And that's important. You have to look at that because otherwise you don't survive. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't refer to our revenue streams as revenue streams unless we're talking to people that don't understand our language. But when we internally are talking about our revenue streams, we actually call them impact streams mm -hmm. because with every dollar that comes in, we understand that that's impacting a life. Right. And it's not just about the dollars, it's about changing lives. Uh -huh. And every time we place an order, we get to increase the number of dignified employment hours we're providing mm -hmm. for people. And most of the people I've never met, but I know their stories. I hear from the founders, I hear from the organizations mm -hmm. how our purchases and us selling those products is helping women who have come out of situations I can't even fathom. Right. So I'd say the number, like getting to watch that number grow 
the impact that we're making. But I would also say on the customer side, when I talk to people about our product, when I tell them all of our products are made by survivors of human trafficking and those coming out of marginalized situations, mm-hmm. 90% of the people, the first thing that comes out of their mouth, if they don't know who we are, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, wow. And I love that. I love talking about our product and talking about how it's changing lives and, and the excitement of our customers and the fact that we have customers that come back and say, I bought this necklace three years ago. I wear it all the time. And when people ask me about it, I'm so excited to tell them this is changing lives and this mm-hmm. is helping survivors of trafficking. Mm-hmm. So I'd say both both sides of that uh-huh. are are really, they make it very rewarding, even yeah. though it's very difficult. No, that's great. Um, all right, looks like we're out of time, but thank you so much for talking with me today. It was really great to hear more about Made for Freedom and your background. Thank you for having me. All right.